Yo, what's up guys, welcome back to another Rocket League video. Today we're going to be checking out Radoshino. He is one of the players on Vitality who just won the championship and the previous major with his teammates. So yeah, we're going to check out how he plays, hopefully learn a few things, and yeah, hope you enjoy. But before that, sponsor time. AOEA allows you to buy and sell Rocket League items at great prices. Whichever platform you're on, you can find that last item to finish off your preset. Use code VMN at checkout for a discount. And I'll leave the link to AOEA down in the description, so be sure to check that out. All right, let's get to it. Oh, got a little bit of a visual bug. Let me fix that. There. Okay. This is the boost there. Pretty unfortunate. He may score position though. He's going to go get 100 boost. He has a lot of space to go for this. Uh, he's going to take a shot. And it results in his opponent passing back to him. It's good aggression at the end of the day. Um, and yeah, just a good attack. Not really much to say about that. Could have maybe passed his teammate on the left, but again, it's, it's uh, just casual rank, I believe. Yeah. Okay, he's playing right defensive here. Adesino's definitely one of the most passive members on Vitality, so it's going to be interesting to see how he defends. Um, a lot of the time he's covering for Zen and Alpha's ridiculous offensive plays, and often assuming that third or second man position. So, it can be a bit of a different perspective from his teammates, I'm sure. But certainly no less mechanical. That was almost an insane play. Yeah, getting very aggressive here. Um, he's going to immediately go back. It's full boost. He's going to turn, realizing his opponent has blundered. Very aggressive uh, aerial play. Yeah, this is kind of, uh, kind of interesting. Yeah, he flips towards the ball here. So he's quite far away from the ball. Um, he flips towards it because I think he wants to just show his opponents that he owns it. But he wants to close that distance as fast as possible because people at this rank are very great, like they're very aggressive, and they'll take advantage of something very quickly. So he knows they're going to swoop in and start attacking. And um, so what this flip does is it immediately shows that he has possession of the ball via distance. So he's kind of just claiming the ball here, and um, before he takes it back, and it's going to kind of make both of his opponents immediately start to think about shadowing instead of committing um, because again he's showing ownership of the ball and then he immediately touched the pass first guy let's steal the boost very unfortunate everybody on vitality does this they all they always go for these boost steals after they made their play very uh, very strong point of vitality indeed It's really nice taking his time here. Very unfortunate with the actual mechanical play. But even here, like this is a this is a bit of a situation where you would expect one of the opponents to make a touch, right? That is your expectation. They're both close to the ball. One of them is gonna touch this ball in one way or another. However, he's so patient. What he does is he just watches. He takes this brief moment just to observe. Because he does, like he has a little bit of time, you know. He doesn't need to commit here, so if the enemy does touch it away fast, he can just turn around. Like, there's no harm. But what he's doing is he's waiting just a second, it's almost like a grace time. And he's waiting to see if they actually give him the space to take a good play on this ball. And as soon as he sees both enemies, this one rotating out, and this one going backwards on the wall, he knows that he's got time. And he doesn't actually boom the ball either, because he recognises he has that time. A lot of people would just shoot here. But he does the same thing that Alpha does, and that's the fact that he sets up this goal line attack. He doesn't hit the ball like this, he doesn't hit the ball like this. He comes around and he waits for the ball to bounce, and then he touches it towards the goal. And this is really important, like you have to do this with your controlled plays. It's a problem a lot of GCs get into, and it's the fact that they just take a grin to air dribble wherever the hell they like. You know, they just take it to the corner, they take it to the wall. But what these pro players are doing is they're actually 
getting the ball in a great position first so they can take it in the goal line. And that makes the actual air dribble 10 times more threatening. Obviously he blunders it with a backflip. Let's not talk about that this way. Everybody makes these mistakes. Okay, his teammate is carrying pretty hard. We respect it. Carrying a championship winner. A really nice defense. Super good patience. A lot of people would double commit here with their teammate. He has full faith in his teammate's first touch. And he's kind of got this mentality which is really important in solo queue. It's going to stop double commits a lot no matter what rank you are. If your teammate screws up and these guys score, it's not your fault. Okay. So you have to trust that your teammates got it. And if this goes in, it's not your fault. Okay, it's your teammates fault. But what, what, what he's doing is actually being where he should be and he's waiting for his teammate to hit this ball. Because if he goes up for this as well, it's going to be a goal for them. But he's just being patient, he's playing where he should, he's not double committing, and actually allows him to make this little save. He gets scored on regardless, but again, like the principle is what's important here. Have faith in your teammates to actually make defensive plays, and if they screw up, they screw up. You know, it doesn't really matter. You want to focus on the things that you can control. A really nice 50. Beautiful, beautiful touch. Really important to, to do this in all of your games. When you're going up to clear the ball and you want to actually clear it effectively, you don't want to actually clear the ball. Okay, that might sound a bit silly, but to clear the ball, you don't want to clear the ball. Because if you clear the ball, what it's going to do is it's going to immediately kill your transition to attack and it's going to give the ball back to the second attacker. And what this is going to do is it's going to give them another attack. It's going to continue the regression and make it difficult for you to defend because you're going to gradually get starved and then eventually get scored on. So what you have to do and what he does here and what all of the players on Vitality do is they take a touch into a recovery. So he actually takes the touch and he's going to recover on the wall and then he's going to follow it. Zen does this a lot with roof plays and Radicino's doing it here with defensive plays. And look, Lips recovers onto the wall and he's touched it in a way that he can follow and continue to own the ball. Because as long as he's close to it like this, he can't challenge. It's impossible for him to challenge. You see, he has, he has to turn. Like, he can't challenge this. It's way too dangerous because he's second man. By staying locked onto the ball there, he's able to actually push the defender back, force him to turn, and then take a very favourable 50. He's going to go for his teammate, or for himself. And look at that, they're getting their attack now. Uh, nice try. You see how that made an attack for them? Really good play. It's very important to do that in defence if you actually want to break away from your opponent's offence. Because if you constantly clear the ball, you're never going to get an attack. Looking for a triple reset, really nice, my goodness. Same mechanical play. Beautiful defense. Take a moment to appreciate. Again, look how patient he is. He knows that if he goes for this, because his, his opponent has possession this time, so he has to wait and play it to the goal line. It's really nice, really nice patience here. Again, using that wall to recover. As you can see, he's thinking about his recovery into the next play. Uses the goal wall. Straight onto this wall. He doesn't have boost, so has to forfeit his position. Can be a goal for the opponents, unfortunately. Yeah. His teammate was not uh, challenging or applying any pressure in defense, unfortunately. Oh, 
He clears the ball. Gets the boost. He was applying pressure, so he has to go. I think it's the mere fight over position. Yeah, a little bit of awkward play happening this past minute or so. Yeah, it seems like they're not gelling too well. Just kind of taking each other's ball. Now you can see the effort here. You can see what he wanted to do. And again, he wanted to get that goal line touch on it, right? He wanted to touch it like this. The fact that he touched it like this is just a mechanical mistake. But just the intention. We all need to have this intention in our gameplay. Because if we just touch this in any way, you know, if we touch it over here, or we touch it over here, like, it's just going to be a bad attack. Like the transition from defense to offense is going to be bad unless we've got this goal line. And that's what he's going for here. Unfortunately, he touches it to the front of his car. He still goes for it. But uh, yeah, as you can see, it's much easier for the opponent to read. Because again, it's not actually threatening the goal to watch from his perspective. Pinches down and then he's just got the ball, you see. No threat. Very easy to defend against. Let's go for the double. Again, first thing we talked about. He always touches the, the ball in order to get a second touch. Look at this recovery. Straight back down to the ground. He he, he's passing to himself. It's really, really strong. He's never hitting the ball in a way that actually puts the ball too far away from him, right? Even with that pass to the side wall, he, he passed so that it would actually come back to his car. He's making sure his opponents don't get the ball for free as much as possible. Nice teammate bumps, take his time, get that goal line, goes for the roof. Doesn't get the goal line, um, goes for a roof play instead. That's probably going to result in them getting either scored on or some bad aggression, yep. Goes aggressive for the boost. Goes for the musty. Let reset. Wow. Beautiful. Really nice play. These guys on Vitality are just mechanically insane. Yeah, so what makes Adesino's defense so good is the fact that whenever he's defending, whenever he gets a chance to transition from defense to offense, he's always taking it through possession. He never gives away the possession when he gets it. So as soon as, those, his, as, soon as his opponents screw up, he's not giving the ball away for free. What he's doing is he's taking the ball and, you know, if he has to flip or he has to pass to himself or if he has to take a touch to defend, he's going to make sure he can follow on that touch and own that ball through distance. Like, he wants to be the closest car on the ball. And that means his opponents cannot challenge in the way they want to and they cannot keep their aggression. And if they do, it's probably going to backfire. So very important to consider this when you're defending. And obviously, yeah, just hope you learned something from this. Absolutely fantastic player. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.